that discipline and, and respect in terms of the path, uh, do you try to appreciate um, whatever your path might be, whether it's actually surfing and finding the zen yeah. of connecting with everything? Like, if it's, if it's that, I was how much discipline surfer, maybe yeah, you, go, how much discipline goes into, yeah. Yeah, yeah like absolutely. Uh, you know, being that I grew up in a, in a military, I grew up a Navy brat, there's, a, there's, I think you're, that was not beat into me, but, mm. um, you know, my dad was a very respect, uh, res- respect my authorita. Well, he wasn't, dad? he wasn't crazy about oh, okay. it, but, uh, you know, he was, he definitely, um, was he one of those sort of lived by those words. I could just look at you and that kind of yeah, respect. Yeah. yeah, to a degree. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, obviously growing up, I became, you know, I sort of, uh, exhibited that that trait it's and you know goes back to the and as you spend time outside or or in whatever you do i think that that respect definitely comes out i res, i try and respect almost everything that i do in life especially on my spiritual path um i think respect for other cultures other religions is absolutely necessary in in order to uh, in order to better understand our world. Otherwise, you're sort of I think you're blocking yourself from uh, yeah. from further knowledge. So, right. what is this this deeper appreciation for ecology and getting away from the war machine? What has it done for your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I have a I have a. <laughs> Super awesome partner now because Excellent. because of my belief systems. And she's really happy, right? That that, that yeah, you've kind of that. Yeah, it was. You, I mean, you get to really express some of these ideas that you might have. Are, are were you holding back before because of your job? Was that ever an issue? Did that get in the way you know, with your relationship at all? I don't know that it was holding me back as much as it was an undiscovered sort of uh, terrain. That I had I like that. within me, yeah. um, so she definitely helped me to open the door and explore that. Yeah, that part. It of seems me. like the, the attraction to the macho man thing is kind of that wane. Inside, that's waning. Right now it's that's, a sensitive man, right? right? Well, yeah. I mean, and so I, I, I don't think I don't think it's a balanced man. Maybe right, 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 like, right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The Bruce Lee, but yes, and the more and ebb and flow, not. Too sturdy because that will break right under pressure. Yeah. Not in like a wet noodle because that's just flopping around. Right. But the, yeah. the actual the bamboo the, that's that's bending in the, in the wind but yeah. stays, retains it's, its kind of strength still. So which is the respect. Yeah. In a sense, it's the right. So. Yeah, there is quite a bit of respect that um, is weaved in there for sure. So bringing it back, I wanted to understand. I want to know your criticisms, maybe from an insider's perspective, and now an outsider's perspective on the war machine, and then anything that's networked to the war machine uh, what do you see its role in, in society right now do you see it dying down do you see it speeding up and out of control what do you see I don't know. it's you know I think throughout recent history it's been cyclic and you you heard this term I, I heard this term a lot with respect to the uh, defense industry it's all dependent on who's Who's in the administration? Right. I think that's true. Yeah. So, I think once Obama got in, you know, you automatically there were quite a few uh, people within the industry who were like, "All right, well, yeah. it's it's inevitable in with respect to the foreseeable future that the industry will go down because yeah. you know, we don't as as Democrats we don't necessarily like to spend a buttload of money on." Like on war toys. Not that. I mean, say the Republicans will want a budget of $600 billion a year on defense, and the, right. the Democrats will say, let's cut it back to $400 billion. Yeah, people, exactly. You know, but it's not that big. It's still so $400 billion. Yeah, it's, it's still, still, yeah, a it's still an absolute money. Absolutely absolutely money. Of our budget is going to that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. Right. But uh, yeah, definitely the Democrats are a little bit less hawkish. They're that spreading that. Though. They want to put that money somewhere else, like maybe in healthcare or... I yeah, all that do. socialist uh, nasty stuff. <laughs> right. Feel like that stuff. Ooh, yeah. evil. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, 
criticizing the war machine, Nagi. What is it? Do you think it's do you think it's moving in a positive direction? That things are starting to how, yeah. Uh, how is this big enig this enigma thing? Uh, what's which way is it going? Is it shrinking? Is it growing? Is it I think it'll. Right I now? think, you know, like I said, I think it goes back to um, administration. Administration. It's that's what it has been for a long time, and I'm sure that's what how unfortunately it'll continue to. The direction that it'll continue to travel. So, do we got to count on administration with very maturely developed interiors? Is that I mean, is that all we can do? Do we have to just keep doing our thing and just hope that well, these people are ethical, or what do we do? You know? I think uh, until conservatives learn that you know not everyone is out to get the U.S. Until that happens, we're still going to try and, I think they're still going to try and exert themselves in a, in a, in a global, in a global way to, to dominate, to keep that, to keep that war machine going. Right? Yeah. It's such a ingrained uh, belief system or belief within that system. You know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta exert your, your, your power throughout the world um, under the guise of, you know, we're gonna, we want to help you. Yeah, I just want to help. I wonder how they, they, they pulled this over on, on the American people, though, this idea that we have to go to the other side of the world and invade sovereign nations to defend ourselves, even before they've attacked us, you know? And, and that seems to just be standard practice in American... It's uh, the fucktarded logic. Uh, we got to fight them over there since they don't come over here. Yeah. Well, it's so we can buy... <laughs> it's so we can buy nice computers and nice... Yeah, yeah. Uh, cheap gas audio equipment yeah here's the thing with, <laughs> with technology um, we got into a technology discussion um, where everybody was kind of picking on it I'm not now I'm, I I think Matt and I will have a different spin because we're always around it running whatever we do and you have, are going to have a different spin on technology do you is technology necessarily a bad thing do you want to return to the stone age like some spirituals want they want like cave days and some but it's just, is that the way to go, or can we do this in a way that technology is more green with us, and it's we still can have our computers, we're just out in nature with our computers, and there's like vines and all kinds of green stuff. And all. What do you see? I mean, just install outlets in the trees. which. <laughs> where do we go with it? I mean, that would be a bad idea. Right? Yeah, be, photosynthesize. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think going back to the cave days is gonna yeah solve anything. I know. You know, that's uh, an extreme idealism. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we can cohabitate with, uh, with technology on a, on a positive level. As, yeah. as long as we know, as long as we uh, realize um, our limits to growth, right? Right, yeah. exactly. Uh, the more we come to an understanding of our limits to growth, I think the better we can we can progress as a society yeah. with with technology. I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with uh, with technology at all. It's it's helped us in in countless ways, right? We can wax poetic about how many ways it, it's it's helped us. It's just that it's gotten out, it's gotten out of control, and we need to uh, we need to. I don't know if you've read. Has, has technology gotten just heightened up on this pedestal? Of just it's supreme in this culture right now. Yeah. Instead of like maybe it's something that's nice and we can use, but we need to appreciate. Well, the problem is that, that as many things as it helps us solve, as many problems as technology helps us solve, it also creates new problems. Absolutely. And we don't often realize that, and so we try to get technology to solve problems caused by other technologies. <laughs> Not just no, yeah, talking about problems it's instead circle. of yeah. See, the te technology is usually neutral, as it doesn't usually usually have. I don't agree. Well, it usually doesn't have an interior. Consciousness, which it changes free, your free interior will. consciousness. It can. So it's not neutral. Not in in that sense, I mean, if you want to get very way. abstract, well, I guess we can, we can go down that way. But I think oh. it's pretty concrete. I mean, like the fact that the camera is on right now totally changes the way we are situated as people here in this real space, right? The way you know the television being on in the living room when you walk into it. Yeah, but your psychic space is altered immediately. Mm. I, I'm making it in the sense that it can't really turn itself on. It can't really pull a trigger, not like that. And so that's that's, that's yeah. the diff whatever that differentiation is for you. Go with that right. and grasp onto that because that's what I'm trying to point at. Um, yeah. So there's going to be ultimately 
what I'm trying to say is take.